Hi, I'm John Sixhawk, and you can call me John. I've been collecting since I was 10 years old, vinyl records, 8-track tapes, CDs, made my own cassette tapes. But what can I do with all of that? Well, that's what I've decided to do, was to share it with you today. Today, I'm going to focus on Buffalo Springfield. Uh, a red hot band that produced three albums and a compilation album just between 1966 and 1968. Uh, the band was made up of Stephen Stills, Neil Young, Richard Richie Ferre, Bruce Palmer, Dewey Martin, and also Jim Messina. So today I'm focusing on three different media types. The first from my collection is Buffalo Springfield again on eight track. And I'm gonna be focusing on the one song, Bluebird. The next uh, media format is HD CD. This is from 1997. And on the back label, you can see, you know, it's getting closer there. It's HD CD. Uh, the third example comes from a 1976 or 1977 vinyl reissue of Buffalo Springfield again. And for those collector fans, notice that this doesn't have the green text, it's black in this reissue. The uh, inner sleeve came with this. And the album itself was labeled thus. The fourth is also a vinyl, but this is from 2018. This is from Buffalo Springfield box set. What's that sound? And this is the stereo version, which all the previous medias were in stereo. And notice this replicates the uh, original green text. And the static inner sleeve which is plain white. And this is a reproduction of the original label on ATCO. So for each of these, I uh, am recording them, digital recording at 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. Um, I will be posting uh, a link so that you can listen to each of those files for the song Bluebird. Um, also, as you'll see in this video, I'm including not only the ability to listen to these different media versions, but also to visually analyze them and, of course, would appreciate any of your observations or comments. So let's begin. Let's take a look at the hardware and software I use to record the different media files of the song Bluebird. 
Uh, first eight track tape was played on a Magnavox 1V9070 eight track tape player. The HDCD was played on a Samsung BDP1590 Blu-ray player. And the two vinyl records were played on a Techniques SLD2 turntable with an Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge and stylus. And that signal was sent through a Behringer PP400 phono preamp. The uh, signal then was sent through a Mackie Micro Series 1202 VLZ mixer, which then was fed into uh, the M Audio Delta 44 2496 PCI Digital Professional audio card and was all recorded into the software package Cakewalk Sonar X1. So now let's take a look at a picture of the audios that you'll be listening to. Um, we're going to take a look at an overlay of the waveform and spectrogram of the eight track recording. So let's take a look at that. So in this image here, uh, I've overlaid the waveform, which is purple in color. It's the amplitude over time. So you would read from left to right the passage of time. Amplitude is basically the volume. So the greater the volume, the greater the peaks. The lesser the volume, the smaller the peaks. Uh, just also to note that the top image is the left channel and the bottom image is the right channel. Now, the other thing is the spectrogram portion, which is behind the waveform purple overlay. So it ranges from yellow to orange, and that is on the vertical axis, and that displays frequency. So the bottom of the image is lower frequency and the top of the yellow to orange range is the higher frequencies. The brighter the frequency color, more yellow and white in color represents the amplitude or how loud it is. So you notice that uh, on the left or right channel, at the bottom of each channel, uh, it tends to be very bright yellow, and that would indicate um, bass in the lower frequencies. So let's break it down now into a, the waveform and the spectrogram separately. So here you're looking at the waveform of the eight track tape recording of Bluebird. And this will be the only time that I'll show you the waveform because I'll focus more on the spectrogram. It tells a, a more interesting part of the story. So again, just as a quick reminder, where we're now looking at just the waveform, the higher the peaks, that is, the louder it is or the greater amplitude, the smaller the peaks, the lesser the amplitude, the quieter the passage. You can note that about three quarters of the way through Buffalo Springfield's Bluebird, there is that quiet period with the strumming guitar leading into the banjo lead out. So here is the spectrogram of the eight track tape version of Bluebird. And just as a reminder again, the, um, the lighter or brighter the color, um, 
that represents an increase in amplitude or volume. And again, the top spectrogram is of the left channel and the bottom spectrogram is of the right channel. And I'll note here, uh, I've marked at the right side of our screen that there's a 10 kilohertz cutoff on the eight track tape. And then in the lower frequencies at about 300 hertz, maybe down to 100 hertz, you can see that the color is getting brighter, more yellow-like on the verge of white, in indicating a greater amplitude. Um, when I listen to the recording of the 8-track version, I definitely see here a well-defined bass guitar uh, in this version. But you can see in the higher frequencies, above 10 kilohertz, there's a strong cutoff and actually nothing is recorded at that greater than 10 kilohertz. So now let's take a look at the 1997 high definition compatible digital. And I think it has a little bit of uh, Neil Young's crew's fingerprints all over it. So on the CD case, uh, it says remastered from the original master tapes, analog to HD CD transfers by John Nolan and his assistant Flash Flommer at Pacific Microsonic, Berkeley, California, digital mastering by Tim Mulligan at Redwood Digital, Woodside, California. So let's take a look at the spectrogram. And so now we can quickly compare in our mind's eye. Uh, first off in the high frequency, there is a definite 20 kilohertz cutoff uh, which most human hearing barely gets up to 20 kilohertz or beyond. Um, the other is in the low frequencies. You can see there's a lot of brightness down in the 100 hertz and extending up maybe into the 300 hertz, just like the uh, previous 8-track tape. Um, but there definitely seems to be a more um, frequency response range, uh, obviously, in uh, this spectrogram. You would guess that it sounds better, but I'm going to leave that up to you to take a listen and compare the 8-track tape versus the HD CD. Are you ready for vinyl? So here we go. So this is 1976 vinyl reissue spectrogram. Um, I note here compared to the previous HDCD that the high frequency cutoff is mostly at 30 kilohertz, but even extends up beyond 30 kilohertz in this 1976 vinyl reissue. Um, I don't see as bright a uh, yellow coloration in the 100 hertz to 300 hertz range as the previous. Um, I don't recall from my listening that the bass guitar didn't seem to come through as much in this 1976 vinyl reissue. And remember, you can always pause the video and take a closer look if you like. So vinyl again, but this is a 2018 vinyl reissue. Um, I've marked off uh, the 30 kilohertz level. So this reissue gets up there, but there's also a cutoff at 20 kilohertz but there is is some uh, frequency range between the 20 and 30 popping through uh, once in a while. 
there seems to be a fuller mid-range in this 2018 vinyl reissue. But again, it worth it worth excuse me, it, it merits um a audio listen comparing the 1976 vinyl reissue and the 2018. Uh, I'll also note um is I wasn't uh accurately controlling the volume. So uh, you definitely will need to play with the volumes as you compare um, eight track to HD CD to the 1976 vinyl reissue and the 2018 vinyl reissue. Uh, last, I've put uh, all four spectrograms side by side um, so that you can compare them visually uh, against each other. Uh, thanks uh, for watching. I hope you take the time to uh, download and listen uh, to the linked uh, in my notes of the four 24-bit uh, 96 kilohertz recordings uh, and compare them to the spectrograms and much appreciate if you take time to leave comments, which ones you think are better or weaker than the others, are they sound all the same to you? Um, and that seems to be, you know, an ongoing points of view uh, amongst members of the vinyl community, you know, the digital versus analog. And I hope you found this interesting. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to do more of these type of videos I have already in the queue, uh, eight track CDs and vinyl of uh, several Beatle albums, uh, several Neil Young albums, and a variety of other artists, probably from the 60s and the 70s. So again, uh, thanks for watching and listening in. Um, share your comments. Uh, give it a like if you like it. And Thank you. This is John Sixhawks, and you can call me John.